Good morning from uh, Little Creek Bee Ranch. I wanted to share a really important tip this morning. We've got serious cabin fever, so we got to do something. This is craziness. Um, you see here <clears throat> a purple box of Jumbo Craft sticks. You can get at Walmart. I think they're three bucks, 300 count. If you look at the ends, they're curved, but for this project, we clip off we clip off the ends. I want to I want to teach you real quick. I thought I made a video of this some time back. Maybe I did, and I couldn't find it on our YouTube channel. This is about tabbed frames or starter strip frames, and there's a lot of advantages in doing this. So let me let me show you the tradition, kind of what normally goes on with frames when we're teaching beekeepers about how to make frames. We teach them how to wire. I have a whole stack here we're going to go through. See the wires that go on the sides? And I'm going to use the sunlight to look through the frame. And you see all the wires? If I hold the frame, oops, I'm one-handed. Hold the frame, all the vertical and horizontal wires. Okay, that's traditional. This is just an old frame. And that's how we teach a lot of the new beekeepers. Okay, well, not a terrible thing. But the brood larva is very heavy and it's got to be supported. That's the whole principle. Okay, there's another way you can do this. All brood frames get these wires. That's required because it's so heavy that the uh, brood has got to be supported. But the vertical wires in there come from the wax foundation that's laid in by hand. Now, if you're only doing a couple of boxes, then it's not such a big deal. But if you buy bunches, a foundation it's expensive and the cost goes up and the handwork goes up and it becomes pretty time consuming okay so this is normal this is traditional what you're seeing here is how I started how everybody in the B classes at Neoba starts how we teach that's how we begin okay but we can do some other things let me set these to the side we can do some other things I think <clears throat> makes things a bit easier for us so I'm going to go through a progression of some of these frames and what bees can do for you. You've got to kind of think outside the box and get the bees to work harder for you. Here in my hand I have a medium frame. I'll pick up. This is a medium frame and it has the craft sticks that you see right down here. They're laid in. There's one, two, three. And when I do these little ones, I'm, gonna, I'm talking about brood frames now, but I'm just showing you what tabs are. I just lay them in there, put a bead of glue down there, and then staple in or nail in the wedge. The wedge is that thin little strip of wood right there. It's called a wedge or a cleat. I just call it a cleat. It gets stapled in. So you can kind of see the nail. There's a nail. There's a nail. And there's a nail. It just holds the foundation or the starter strips in. Now again, this frame I'm holding is a medium, no wires. Okay, let me come back to that. I just wanted to show that to you. Let me come back to that. So when we do a brood frame, get the brood frames out of the way, <clears throat> remember they all have to be wired. You can see the edges of the wire. Well, oh, this is rough with an iPad. Okay, so they're all wired, okay? At least two wires, at least two. So you see the wires. Okay, now, when I lay in a tab, you can do this two different ways. The cleat I just showed you, that cleat right there, you can turn 90 degrees. See that? You can turn it up 90 degrees, and it just gives them an edge. An edge. See the staple? You see the staples. There's staple. Just a T45, T50 hand staple. So then the bees can go up there off that edge and pull down wax as they want. And they'll go, usually they'll go right through the comb. Now, beekeepers get real, I think, sometimes too picky. They want perfect wax. Come on. There's no such thing as perfect comb. The bees are going to draw what they want to draw the way they want to draw it as they want to draw it. 
My concern is the time savings and cost and handwork. That's my issue. So here's a stack that we're going to go through. Again, this is about tabbed frames, how you can save some money and time, let the bees make some new wax for you. See these little daubles of comb? The bees drew this down. There's the comb. There's the starter strip. And they just draw them down. There's a better, maybe it's a better one. There you go. And they just draw them right down there. They'll connect all that up at the bottom. But they're going right through the wax or around the wax. It doesn't matter to me. They're going to do it the way they want to do it. My issue is when I do a lot of these, man, it takes a lot of time when you're doing foundation and wires. Wires go through the ends. There's a place for four wires. If you really want to be even tighter, you can just do two. Just put it through there, zip it around, and bring it back here. That gives you two, but four is the best for support. So you don't, you don't have to do these uh, craft sticks. That was how I started, and then it got even easier. You just take the uh, <coughs> cleat, like you see here. It comes with the frame, and just zip it off the frame, scrape off any wood shavings, and then turn it 90 degrees and staple it in. Done. Real simple. I think this is a powerful tip. One of the most popular tips I give everybody when I teach and share. Okay, now that one I can use. <clears throat> so, there they start it, pulling down off the starter strips. So let me go, I'm going to go all the way. Put them behind me here. Okay, it's kind of a progression. And the starter strip again. Well, this one actually, this one doesn't even have a starter strip. It has a pattern on this frame. We just left a little ribbon of a wax pattern up there at the top, and they pulled that down. See that? Yeah, it works for me, man. Oh, there is some, look at that starter strip over there. One, two, there's two of them. So one one piece fell out. They're still connected up. So there's two pieces of a starter strip. Hmm. One, one piece must have fell out. Okay. Background. Pull it right down. No big deal. No big deal. They'll pull it, they'll pull it right down. Okay, so they get a little bit bigger. Here's another one, again, yet bigger. Starter strip, all the way across, pull it down. See, pull it down, not a big deal. You, you need to learn how to manipulate your bees and get them to work harder for you. That's what you need to learn. They had no problem doing this, okay? The tip is, you can't, key, I say key, you can't give them all 100% starter strips sitting together. It's got to be alternated. Like foundation, tab, foundation, tab, foundation, tab, or comb, tab, comb, tab, whatever. <clears throat> you got to alternate them, called checkerboarding, and alternate them. All right, now here's a big one. Here's one's filled. Now I'm going to hold it up to the sun. See the tab at the top? All the way across the top, kind of candling the frame. See the tab? Now the bees got no problem doing this. Some beekeepers will tell me, but they make a lot of drone comb when you do this. Well, they're going to do some. I'm not going to get too awful picky about it. See all this right in here? That's normal. A little corner, or, or they'll do a corner over here. They do a corner right there. And that's drone. That's normal. What's not normal is when you see a big old patch of drone, or more, or all of it. They're getting ready to swarm. Even before they make queen cells, they're going to lay in, she's going to lay in lots of drone. Bees instinctively want to be sustainable. So you need to kind of change your mindset. Not only swarm cells, if you see swarm cells, you're way behind. But I pay attention to the volume of drone. How much volume, how, 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 what kind, I mean, how much volume are they laying on the frame? So there's an older one, and the patch of drone that you see. Let me get a light on there. That's normal. Okay, so uh, there's the strip at the top. This is a brood frame. It's got wires. They'll do just fine. Now here, watch this. If this frame gets nasty and gnarly and really bad, and it's time to harvest it, 
all I got to do is put my fingers here and rip it on down and right out. But if I have the vertical wires in there, it makes it really frustrating and harder to clean out a frame. So I like this because, because when they're nasty, you just harvest and wax and you can rip it right down, right down the edges and clean off the wires and you're good to go. Clean it up. As long as you got a tab up there, they can redo it again. Bees will clean for you, but they have limits. Uh, you give them too nasty of a frame and they'll reject it. They'll reject it if it's too nasty. Okay, here's another one. Let me set the craft box to the side. There's the, whoops, there's my sticks into the box. Now let's look at this one. <clears throat> what do you notice about this one? There's a tab frame. It's got a tab frame. Let's go candle it in the window. There's the tab at the top, just under the top bar. Yep, you can see the tab. Okay. That hole you see, that hole that you see is a passage hole. They make a transverse passage hole. They typically do that on the corners down here. They don't connect the bottom because they pass back and forth through on the sides. And sometimes, like you see here, you see that hole in the middle. They'll do that for passage. But now look at the size of holes. That side right there versus that side right there. You know, if I was paying attention and I see this size of holes that much, that's drone and that colony likely swarmed because there's so much drone. Remember, they instinctively want to be sustainable. So to leave a group of bees behind, they not only have to have a queen cell, what else they got to have? Drones, a good population of drones. That doesn't mean the drones will mate with that queen. It's just a survivability instinct. They're going to produce drones as well. The drones actually will come first. The volume or mass of drones will come first. So there's a frame that's done like with a tab. Well, turn it this way. Candle the top. You can see the star strip. Again, if it gets really nasty and old, I just come down here where the wire is and I just rip it out. I just take it out. So, so I think that's a big deal. Okay. The, again, the key here is if I was going to give this one, the next one can be a starter strip frame and the next one needs to be foundation or comb and then strip, then comb, then strip, comb, just alternate and break them up and they'll pull them out pretty quick. They'll pull them out fast enough. Okay. So that's brood frames. What about honeys and mediums? Back to my medium. Now check this out. I th I, this gets exciting for me. See, this is a tab. Now, again, I don't have to do the, the craft stick tabs. I, I mean, I can. But I like taking this cleat and just, when I get new frames, rip it off, scrape off the edges, turn it 90 degrees, and just staple it in. Dunk, 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 and I'm done. That's on mediums and shallows. No wires here. There's no wires. Now I'm going to spin you around. All the mess. This is, this is what happens when you... Be bigger, be heavy, more and more junk. <laughs> and then up on the <clears throat> rack here, we have a whole mixture of frames that have wires. Wires, they'll get cycled out. And then frames that don't have wires that are all tabbed. Okay, so I prefer all my shallows and mediums <clears throat> to be just tab, no wires. They're easier to mess with, all right? So we cycle those through. Whoops, sorry, a little fast. Cycle them through, and cycle them through, and rip out the wires, the vertical wires, and, and the old wax. Okay, so that's how it starts. Same principle applies when you give them in the box. You need to be starter strip, foundation strip, foundation strip, foundation alternate. Same principle here. Now, two years ago, we were doing this, and I did I don't know 20 or 30 boxes. Got so excited, April, I put them out there, and they all had tabs. All I didn't know this. See, all of them had tabs, all of them, all the way across. So I came out in a month, I was so excited because this was going to be my cut comb honey. And I opened the box up <clears throat> after a month and they had pulled nothing down. They did nothing. They did kind of weird little dobbles of comb from the bottom up. It's crazy comb. And I was uh, dumbstruck talking to some of my buddies. We alternate them and then within a week they pulled that all down. Zoosh. They pulled all that down inside there because we alternated them 
and you need to close up the top to make it hot, to keep it warm up top. The first box you put on for the year, you want them to pull you down some wax, make some cut comb, and here's what this might look like. So here's a medium frame. We'll candle it again in the window. And it has tab, no wires. There's a passage holes along the bottom and corners. That's very normal. Top corners, all usually all four corners have a passageway. <clears throat> now here's, here's the multiple benefits you get. Not only do I not wire them, I don't lay in foundation, so that saves me some time and cost. Now when I have like this one, this, this comb, this frame could have been a nice cut comb frame. It's really nice and pretty and clean. And had it been capped and covered, I would have laid the whole thing on a cookie sheet. We made a video of us doing cut comb. <clears throat> you can go to the YouTube channel and look at it. And take a serrated knife and just run it right down the edge here. I'm making cut comb now. Down the edge and just very carefully along that starter strip. Don't split any wood off into the wax. Just very carefully down there. And then I can pull it up and, and down there on the cookie sheet would be my slab of comb. But I would have left not only the starter strip but a ribbon of wax just about a half inch as a pattern for them for next year. Don't mess with it. Leave it alone. That's all they want is a pattern. We set all these frames out for them to lick up and dry and we've got a whole batch of them and they'll be our cut comb frames. Okay, see that? No wires. Starter strip using the craft sticks. Nice medium frame. That would make a good cut comb frame. So I get multiple benefits. I like killing three birds with one stone. I got no wires, I don't need them, and if I wanted to spin it, very seldom do I have a blowout where it blows the middle out because of because there's no wires. That doesn't happen very often. Even if it did, it's not a problem because the bees will fix that right back. Your bees are good at fixing, so let them fix. Don't worry about that. Just think about the benefits and the time savings and the cost savings. Again, when you put it back in the box, you got to be Strip, foundation, strip, foundation, strip, foundation, or strip, comb, strip, comb, strip, comb. You alternate them. So, let's look at another one. Here's a gnarly one, a little bit older. It's got some brood. Looks like some brood. It was part of a brood system. Passageways. Let's candle the frame. Uh-oh. And what do we see? Oh. There, and it, that's, not, that's not a strip. This was a ribbon. This was a ribbon frame. In other words, it was an old frame. You see, see all the new wax right here? Now this is cocoons. All this is new. All this. What's old is that little strip. See that up there? It's darker. That's older. And this was probably a frame that we, uh, oh, probably a year ago, we sat here in the hut with a bee student of ours and ripped out a whole bunch of uh, old, uh, old frames. I appreciate his help. We did a lot of good work that day and got a whole lot of frames cleaned out. And we leave a little strip. Okay? Even if it's old and black, just leave a little bit of a strip. Now, that doesn't have any wires. See on the end, no wires. <coughs> Excuse me. So now I can still use this for brooding if I wanted to brood. <coughs> I don't really want to cut comb, make chunk comb with, with uh, cocoons. I could probably use that. But I just operate by sections at a time. I would probably use this frame for brooding only. Or honey only. No cut comb. So uh, works fine. Spins great. Not, not a problem. The bees do their thing. Not worried about that. Let's go to shallow. Here's a shallow frame. Same principle. This is a big, big frame. Look at it bubbled out. See that? Bubbled out. Big old wide comb. Okay, let's candle it. Strip. See the strip at the top? Okay, strip at the top. Can't see. No wires. Hmm. Look at the holes. Bigger holes. 
Hmm. There was honey in there though. They didn't lay in drones. They just did bigger, bigger holes. Because I don't use my shallows for brooding. The bees will build what they want the way they want. They've got their reasons for doing it. Passage holes. See any passages? No. Hey, no. Not really. Okay. So so I could use this for cut comb next year. Yeah. Those are big holes, pretty big. That's okay, a lot of honey. But what I can do, see that? That CC, that stands for cut comb, and that was 2011 when I made this frame up. And that's what they did. So I, would, I just intentionally wanted this frame for, you know, to use for cut comb, and they filled it out. And now I will go back and use that frame for cut comb. Oh, hey, listen, let me give you another tip. I cut this section out for cut comb. I'll let you do the math. And I make uh, eight chunks. I can make eight chunks. And they'll fit into a pint jar for $12 a piece. That's one frame. One frame. Times nine. At $12 a pint. Okay, you can do the math. Cut comb is a big deal. All right. <clears throat> Here's another one. This is our last one. Hmm. Hmm. There's wires. Wires have become my nemesis. See the vertical and horizontal wires? Well now, what can I do with this one? Nothing. It's honey only. And there's wires in there. See the wire ends? I can't cut comb out of that. I'm not going to brood in it. So it's it's a honey only frame. That's all I can use it for. Passages. Hmm. You getting the idea? Tradition, you know, that's how we all start. But you get smarter and more clever and you start rethinking some of the things you do and you get a little bit more mileage. So I think in my mind the wires become kind of limiting, kind of a limiting factor. But, you know, I hope I gave somebody some good ideas. There's some craft sticks at Walmart you can get. Jumbo craft sticks. 300 count. I think they're three or four bucks or something like that if you want to do that. Or you can take the <coughs> cleats. If you look, uh, look if this was a cleat. Just turn it 90 degrees, staple it, staple it in, and you're good to go. Mediums and shallows, we don't wire. Mediums are Illinois. Shallows are honeys. We don't wire those. Brood frames, they always get wired. Too heavy. Okay, I hope that was a cool tip, and I hope somebody really gains something from that. If you'll go back and look at... Uh, our YouTube channel and scroll down and find the one for cut comb when we're doing some cut comb in the kitchen you'll under, get a better understanding but that's a big savings tip I think savings in time and money and uh, I hope you benefit from that have an awesome day we're ready for springtime